Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Steam is getting mobile, and it is quite toofy, a little bit blue, and we're getting Rocket DLC. It's incoming, kind of, sort of, not really, I don't know if you can call it DLC, man. DXVK has a new release. Might be time to give Witcher 3 a whirl. And Darkest Dungeon has some new DLC. Bye, guys. Everspace is out of beta, and damn, does it look good. And the 1100 NVIDIA series is coming. Spool up the rumor mill. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the Nightmare Fuel live from Athens, joined every week by a man up north, the guy in Toronto. They haven't kicked him out yet, and one Jordan's fine. Hey, Sexy, what's they, up? They, they literally can't. They can't. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm chained to Canada. Oh, no. Via the Go- Gossamer Tooney tra- chain that is... Canada. Well, you could yes. always travel to the island because that's where one Pedro Mateus is currently hiding and is the uh, witness a uh, delocation program. Um, <laughs> <laughs> delocation. That, that, that's, that's, the thing. <laughs> that's the thing now. No, no. He, they, they just don't let him have a location anymore. There isn't, man. They took out his GPS <laughs> chip, man, and Shot Realm Dynamic joining us every week, helping us form the last little bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's on each other's live organs. I think we all bought new stuff. I actually bought something because it's like, well, Jordan's going to buy that. I need to buy something, too. But what I bought was like dog shit compared to what Jordan got, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, I, did, I did some surgery today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I removed this from my anus. Hot. And I, <laughs> and I, and I installed its replacement. Uh which used to go into this box. Oh, it's not. Fuck, fuck you, audio listeners. I'm holding up a 1080 <laughs> Ti box. Um, yeah, so that's in uh, that that's in the computer right now. I was playing some games earlier. See how that runs. I can play Tomb Raider at 60 FPS at UHD, which is pretty cool. Um, but I, uh... bringing, bringing me back to the, given given news coming that we're going to talk about later, mm-hmm. this is about to become a very expensive paperweight. So if anyone wants to, if anyone wants to grab one of these for three hundred bucks now, <laughs> hit, hit, hit me up, baby. Better do it, man. Hey, mm-hmm. man, I, I can't wait for you to throw a Raven's Cry at it. We're we're all going to be sitting down munching the popcorn <laughs> as that uh, takes it the 1080 Ti to its <laughs> knees. Uh, what's up, Pedro? Do you got anything new to share with the beautiful party no. people? No, I don't. Uh, this week, well, this month and probably next month, we're going to be in cost contention mode on accounts of move. So, yeah, Nori uh, is uh, looking at places and we're going to be visiting some places in the coming weeks. So, yeah, no, no fancy new things for me to show. Uh, have you uh, uh, gotten to take a look at some of the places that you have no choice in whether or not you're going to move there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have a look. <laughs> <laughs> and only have a look <laughs> over here in Vinland. Not a whole lot. Uh, I, I'm not as cool as Jordan, but I did pick up some studio headphones. The AKGs. Uh, what are they? Two two forties. They're good for studio headphones. I uh, just want to say warning: don't buy these. If you're like, I want to listen to music, it'll be great. They won't. These are good for voice. That's about it. And what did I do? Oh yeah, Arch Cup's gone. We now have the Arch Keg. It. Uh, <laughs> A couple of people were blowing me up, man. I had more than one, and that's one of the things I always think about. And they're like, hey, man, you're just drinking two liters straight. And I'm like, that's how I drink two liters. Have you seen how I drink wine? I take the cork out of the bottle and carry the bottle around. So, uh, yeah, this is my life hack. This holds two liters, so I can have my two liter and drink it, too. Yeah. I, I actually, to hijack on the shipping from the 1080 Ti, I bought like a 1.5 liter Nalgene bottle just to toss around. Oh, right in. Do you think uh, we're going to yeah, toss it? Toss around the horse a little bit this week? No, the, the horse has been liquefied for like six fucking years, man. We, we I guess we could have like little horse ball fights. All right, horse ball fights. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's the steam! Linux. Update of the world. Yeah. Sale. So the sale is coming. Uh, as usual, it leaked out a bit earlier, and the Steam database was like, yo, it's going to be June 21st this year that the Steam summer sale is going to kick on. So uh, the last year, it was from June 22nd to July 5th. So chances are uh, this, uh, this year, it's going to end on July 4th. So you know what to expect. 
sort of, kind of, maybe. But it's a Steam sale. Chances are you already have the games that you want, Mm -hmm. and you're only going to pick up those that have been on your wish list for years. So, yeah. That's Gentlemen, probably what I'm well, what do you think about this? Because I definitely think with everything going on sale, basically all the time these days. Um, mm-hmm. The la- and on top of that, the last few Steam sales not that spectacular. Maybe question mark. It's like uh, there, there were a couple of things in there. Uh, the previous Steam sale I was like, oh, that's a good price on that, but it wasn't like, oh, mm-hmm. I got to buy that right now. Um, not really excited about it. I mean, it's like okay, well, I know the date to peruse, but it's not. Of Steam sales of old, like maybe two, three years ago. Where, I would even yeah. say like three, three, four years ago. Because at this at this point, I, I think it's the Steam sales get a lot more value for like Windows users because like a lot of there's a there's still a lot of indie games that are not released on Linux, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they go for like a buck or some shit on on the summer sales. So that's a great way if you're like a Windows dual booter, you can even just pick up some shit. But out, out here in Linux land, where we get about a fifth of uh, what they get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the, yeah, like like Pedro said, at this point, you pretty much, aside from like stuff that has just come out and it's going to get maybe a 5-10% discount at most, you're not going to yeah. find much you're going to want on the, on the Steam sales these days. So This is true. I mean, I do think, uh, not think, I noticed like last time, Rocket Cars, I was going to pick up a couple extra copies to give away because there was always like, hey man, you know, that's a good thing that people t- seem, seem to want. And that it never went to like nine bucks or anything like that. It was always like thirty yeah. percent off or something like that. Um, Steam's gone mobile, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, <laughs> Steam Link. You were wondering why the Steam Links were on fire sale? Well, wonder no more. Available free of charge on all major platforms. It's an app that you can download for iOS and Android. Plug it in, stream your games. It's basically you're using your mobile as a Steam Link. But Jordan, I see a critical flaw in this because how would you pair a controller a steam controller well, we'll let's talk let's well, you, you, are you talking about one of these things that i'm just rubbing ever so seductively oh no stop uh well well we're gonna talk about that a little later because i would have thought you need like some sort of usb on the go thing but uh, <laughs> uh i i i got i got the whole rant later Anyways, uh, this this is this is a little this is interesting, right? Like we've been we've been talking about how they've really been underutilizing the Steam app on Android and iOS for a while. It's basically just a two factor mm-hmm. authenticator and uh, a mobile storefront, really. Like if you're if you're if that summer sale comes and you really want to get on that flash sale for Little Inferno or whatever, because it's like <laughs> a penny, then then maybe that I, I've I've straight up done that. I've been like, oh, this thing went on sale and now it's like super cheap. Yoink. Um. But yeah, the uh, this is going to be a game streaming device, sort of like in the vein of uh, like straight up a more portable Steam Link, hmm. uh, available on your yeah. smart TV, on your like cell phone, tablet, whatever. Um, it the is connectivity a new are kind of interesting as well. Uh, the thing that they're doing is that it's not going to be uh, an update to the existing Steam app. They're going to have a whole new one available from May 21st. You'll be able to download the Steam Link app, Literally which is a separate app. <laughs> um, here's my thing. Okay, we're, we're about to get into what they're really going to do. My first thought earlier this week, because this came out before the next bit of news that we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. was it's like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you think somebody would actually make a Android tablet with a Steam controller built into it? And the Smash Z tablet. Exactly. Pedro threw down. He's like, what about the Smash Z, bro? What about that? The future's now, bro. And it's like, do people really want tablets with Steam controllers? To which I retorted, you know what? A lot of people do what they want. Um, well, what I should say is they wanted what Smash Z promised like a half decade ago, and they've still not delivered anything. Um, but it turns out, Jordan, we don't we don't have to worry about any of that shit, right? No, we don't. Um, actually, actually, the one the one thing that kind of weirded me out was the little. I, I guess this is just a common peripheral, but they have that game controller attachment thing for, I guess, iPhones, and I'm sure there's some Android equivalents. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but the 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 main thing here is you're going to be able to stream your uh, content, your games, or video. You, they're saying, oh yeah, you can stream your movies over this because people watch movies on Steam, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can you can you can stream it over Wi-Fi or LTE. So if you're going to be playing this on the go, I a hope you have a very good mobile plan and b a very good home internet connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. Uh, how about your Bluetooth yeah. connection though? Do, do you need any work on that? 
Yeah, apparently not. I, I thought, well, if they're going to put a streaming app on uh, Android, they're going to need some way to get the controller hooked up. Well, motherfucker, look, look, look at what they did. The Steam, there's they a did. new. If you're on the if you're on the Steam uh, beta, you mm-hmm. can now pair your uh, Steam controller via Bluetooth. I did it. It fucking works. You plug it in. You run the firmware update. Uh, if you hold down the Steam key and the B button, B is for Bluetooth. Uh, you can it just switches it into Bluetooth pairing mode, and Steam can Steam key and uh, A will switch it back to original dongle mode. Steam and B. Yeah, that's okay. I just yeah. noticed that that is actually not a bad. Um... Yeah, it's yeah. it, it, it's it's pretty B is for Bluetooth, man. That's it's pretty dead simple. Um, yep. It's the magic of software defined radio because this was using that like crappy Wi-Fi Direct thing, and then they're like, "Hey, we're just gonna update the little little fucking antenna ROM on here to now support Bluetooth 4.1." Have fun with that. That works, and uh, I think a lot of mobile devices have Bluetooth LE nowadays, right? Most you, you'd have to go out of your way to find one that doesn't. Nexus in straight straight up doesn't have Bluetooth. Uh, no, it has Bluetooth. It doesn't have Bluetooth low energy. You need the LE. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I, okay. I, I mean, it worked with like the freaking Radio Shack dongle I bought. So, yeah. Oh. And it worked with my Chromebook uh, when I paired, because I too ran the uh, little update on my uh, Ariola controller. Mm-hmm. And uh, it pairs with uh, the Chromebook just fine. The thing with the Chromebook is it recognizes it as a hybrid mouse keyboard type device, not as a game controller. Uh, I guess it's just defaulting to like the desktop configuration uh, because it's detecting that it's Chrome OS, so it's defaulting to the desktop configuration, and it would need the Steam Link app to actually work in regular controller mode. I just like we'll the fact see that they have to say dongle mode on a web zone. <laughs> that's see, that, that's a show title. Yeah, legitimate one. Yeah, from from uh, it's 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 a sequel to Asmo dongle mode. Dongle mode. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, that's the thing. You no longer have to hack your um, Steam controller to make it work with the Bluetooth. Nope. No, this is this is true. Um, they just and, uh, enabled uh, activators for everything. <laughs> yep. And so, also, if you find a security flaw in in any sort of Valve software now, you may not get your Steam account banned. This is from HackerOne.com, and Valve has finally decided to put up a bug bounty for, quite frankly, a measly hundred dollars uh, for the minimum bounty. Okay. Uh, the uh, maximum they say, the, the maximum they say uh, is uh, two thousand dollars for uh, C- for uh, CVE like seven or higher vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. But they mm-hmm. and uh, I mean th- this this is a good step. But I have a problem with uh, the, what they're doing in this announcement because they have a bunch of scopes. Uh, it's for um, it's for uh, st- uh, the Steam website, the Steam client, command line utility, Steam OS, Steam Works, mobile app, the servers, Valve titles, and multiplayer in-game economy. Um, but they have a bunch of exclusions for uh, denial of service, spamming, social engineering, physical access, hypothetical issues that don't have a practical impact. Here's the thing about hypothetical issues is after a while, they stop being hypothetical once computers get sufficiently powerful enough and they're still yeah. getting pretty powerful. <laughs> Click jacking, hey, maybe maybe you want to track all that shit. Cross-site service, hey, maybe you want to be alerted to when someone can hijack your requests. And you can do all sorts of shit when things are under denial of service because when CPUs and processors are under load, you can take advantage of things because they're going to be fucking working overtime and generating heat and flipping bits and shit. Yeah. So, and what, I, I, one I, of the I, things that jumped out at me was the, uh, the physical access one because... Not too long ago, I don't know if that's still the case, but Valve actually had a thing on their uh, support page which mentioned the fact that if you wanted to have an internet cafe, you should go uh, through a process so you could get approved and they would let you run Steam with some more, you know, just let you have a few games for a fee uh, and anyone who went in and logged in could play them. That is significant. Let's say someone goes into an internet cafe, they log in using their account, their issue, yes, but let's say someone else goes afterwards and they can access that person's account. That is a significant attack vector. It shouldn't be an out-of-scope bug. It should be something you should be worried about. Hmm. Really, the only and, comment and, I have on... Go ahead. Uh, I was I was just going to say, like, 
when it comes to doing security analysis or that you can't really define scope because you're going to find in three to five years that, Hey, that thing that was out of scope. Oh, it was impossible. Um, now, now there is a practical exploit for it. All right. I'm just going to say yep. this, um, uh, valve, you fucking print money. What is up with those low ball mm-hmm. rewards? That, that, that doesn't even begin to tap on what you could a sellable exploit. I mean, mm-hmm. thousand bucks. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. Mm-mm. I mean, this, if someone this... exploits something within Steam, they could stand to make a hell of a lot more money than you're offering people to fix them. Yeah, in the first 30, possibly 47 seconds. So, yeah. That's <laughs> like some anemic. Uh, it, Google does, you know, the bug bounties. Bug bounties are great. I like them, but you need to put some cash behind them. You're, you're not exactly a scrappy little startup, man. Uh, like a couple of these titles are with open source on Steam since we talked about it last week. Yeah, uh, you're you're saying that wouldn't it be nice if there was some sort of curated open source project list? Lo and behold, there it is. There are currently 19 total open source projects on Steam. Uh, one of which is Krita, which is the uh, mm-hmm. friggin' content is a content creation tool. Godot is on there as well. Um, some screen sharing, screenshotting program. Uh, and yeah, so it's it's not so it's and and Blender of course. So. It's not 19 open source games because people distribute their software over Steam for some reason. I don't know. I'm sure there's some real reason for it. Um, but it's 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 nice to know that these are there. Hopefully, as more open source projects start getting put on Steam, maybe we can maybe we can coax Valve into actually supporting them via stuff like Pay What You Want. Yeah, the idea for um, yeah. games that have been around a long time with established communities. You should. I, I love what I said last week. Just let them in for free. They shouldn't have to pay the hundred dollar tax. That genuinely, you can post a game called Asset Flipper, like the dude did two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and get it published to prove that even in the description, everything in here is a direct copy. Asset Flipper. I did the bare minimum to make a game, and you know we got projects that have been around for decades. Like Val's, like yeah, give us some of that cheddar, baby. This is not right. Yeah, like like yeah. straight up literal decades too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, I saw it's like oh, Krita is on Steam, and then I paid attention to the little icon on the side. It's like oh, Krita on Steam costs six ninety nine and is Windows only. Huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> let, 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 let's be real. The actual Krita users know better. So I was about to say all, all Linux users just basically went Krita's on Steam. Question mark? Yeah, yeah that, that was a perfectly <laughs> normal and healthy reaction. Uh, we talked about it last week. Uh, Valve nommed the team behind Firewatch. And, uh, Indeed. A little bit of an update, right? Yeah, uh, Rock Paper Shotgun uh, had a little bit of an interview with uh, the fine, fine folks uh, at Campo Santo. Uh, Sean Veneman and Jake Rodkin were the two interviewed uh, and, well, basically bunch of questions it's like okay so how is uh the move to valve going to impact your development on the game that you're working on right now uh valley of the gods and they're saying well it's basically already helped uh already helped us a lot because there's a lot of people that actually have made games in the past past being the operative word there uh, <laughs> and apparently they're getting a lot of help from them so that's great uh there's uh in my mind, I'm just asking, please, oh, please, may Valley of the Gods not end up like Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Because uh, as the interviewer pointed out, uh, almost uh, at the bottom, he was saying, okay, so every studio that ends up getting um, absorbed by Valve, they tend to never, ever release another game. Uh, do you think you guys will run into the same issues? And they say... Well, we're not superstitious, and we don't think that'll happen. Blah, 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 blah. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, and let, let 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 let's be real. If you get hired by a company that basically lets you work on whatever pet project you want and pays you and doesn't really expect any much from you, <laughs> yeah, odds are, odds are you're going you're going to be doing you're just going to be doing stuff that interests you. And if for whatever reason your like, your current project doesn't uh, maintain that interest well, so, so long valley of the gods one thing i do find interesting about this entire thing they're mentioning that campo santo as an entity still exists valve bought out all the employees and the firewatch firewatch uh and uh, mm-hmm. valley of the gods all belong to valve now so campo santo still actually exists i 
It's strange. Yeah, I think yeah. it's it's all for night. You don't you don't have to worry about him uh, because they're still under the illusion. Because Valve doesn't tell you that you this is your life now. Your new job is making hats and other cosmetic <laughs> items until the third month. That's really what the number three is all about. Um, mm-hmm. Jordan, you, you you got some poop food. I I will be eating shit. I will be eating so much shit <laughs> uh, because there's a new Darkest Dungeon DLC coming out on June 9th. And I'm just a glutton for punishment. I've I've got this game twice. Uh, I go I bought it on the Switch. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna, and probably if they don't send us this DLC, I'm gonna end up buying it on PC and the Switch as well because that is what I play on the toilet these days. Because <laughs> l- l- listen, when you're blocked up, go. We're doing a couple Darkest Dungeon runs, and shit getting real will make you vacate your bowels sometimes. Um, I I, I, ex- I guess autocorrect in, in the show notes corrected horde to horse. <laughs> So I like a horse-based wave. That answers <laughs> fucking questions. That answers fucking questions. I, listen, I don't. Uh, yeah. I actively avoid anything to do with like turn-based strategy. So I was like, okay, it's got horses in it. All week is what but, I've been thinking. It's like, oh, all right. I mean, not yeah. the strangest Hor- bullshit I've dealt with. Yeah, horde-based. So you basically just keep fighting enemies until you die or they give up or something or other. Is there anything new in the color of madness outside of just the color? Uh, of yeah, they're 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 adding a bunch of boxes. They're adding uh, a new enemy faction, so they'll just be random things that will show up in your existing uh, missions. A bunch of new items, and yeah, and it's how how much is it going to be? Five bucks. That's five that's bucks. decent yep. for like five five dollars. Will get you quite a bit of gameplay out of that. Uh, especially as you die and die and die and die. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's not Yeah, some... five dollars. It gets you a new environment, two new bosses, bunch of new uh, items, and uh, the there's a new salesman in the caravan in town. So go hey, ahead. Thank you, thank you, Pedro the parrot. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Pedro's having trouble following along this evening. Rocket League roadmap yes. 2018, man. It is definitely a thing. What are we getting? We're getting a new arena this month. Hopefully it'll work out of the box. Unlike the farm map, uh, they have a new thing in here that I was kind of interested in because you can now create cross-platform parties because now they've tacked in uh, a user ID number. So you can create those parties with your friends on uh, maybe even the Switch. I don't know, but the Poi stations and all those other things. But one thing I noticed, man, you go through all this down here and they're like, hey, the man, new license, premium DLC. That's cool. But then they get into some loot boxes, Pedro. Well, what's this business all about? It's, uh, well, they already had loot boxes. If you okay, played, let, let me uh, rephrase that. Uh, <laughs> loot boxes times extra. Yeah, uh, it's loot boxes Monthly with uh, subscription a teeny loot tiny boxes. cherry on top. Yeah, sort of. It's a, the Rocket Pass. And if you've played Dota or you've played Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you probably know about the passes. Uh, they're basically a way that when they put out a new event with specific items you can just play the event uh, uh, without paying anything extra and you can unlock things as you're playing along grinding as they call it and if you buy the pass which is a flat fee they say you will unlock everything from the get-go so yeah that's uh that's all right i guess well, hey, man, things like uh, jump ramps for when you run out of boot. I'm just, somebody already made this, though. <laughs> new Rocket League items, plus a new premium DLC body, the Battle Bus. Mm-hmm. A eh, little, little bit too, a little bit much, a little extreme. I, I don't know no, that's going to make it in there. But I like the idea. Well, I like the way that they're, they're doing it. D- don't fool yourselves to skirt the gambling thing by letting you see what's in a crate if you want to pick it up and subscribe. So it takes out the gambling mechanic. Does it though? Um, you're still getting a random uh, item. <laughs> but you get a chance to see what I, I, I honestly, I'm not going <laughs> to engage with any of this stuff at all. I don't think any of us are. No, not really, but no, you know, no, other people so. might. Um, no. Okay. Well, let's get on to a topic that is a bit more savage, savage lens. Last Bastion Studio takes on the Savage Lands. This sounds like it's something good. Savage Lands is basically a survival simulator mm-hmm. written in Unity that runs like junk on a 980. I mean, it's horribly bad. It is multiplayer. You craft shit. You got a nanny bar that you just stay alive. Last update from this was like, hey, man, this game's abandoned. Where's the updates? Is uh, 
guy's like, I, I've been working on my new game, so I can't update this game anymore. It's been early access for years. Fourteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. What they're talking about is this new Moon Studio that all of a sudden is working on it to continue uh, new things and updates. It's bullshit. Uh, this is just an excuse to stay in early access longer without doing anything. There hasn't been updates in months, and what updates are what? Listen, how about this? I. Do you think I'm crazy, uh, Pedro? Because it really seems like the only reason they've said anything, this is just words, too. There's nothing to back this up. Yeah. The, the reason no, they said uh, this is because recently a lot of people are calling them out on the Steam page. They're like, this is an abandoned project. And they're like, no, guys. Yeah. Here, you you get a free Smash C at the end of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, well, right now, it is just words. It's just them. Oh, yeah, we brought the original director that left... Now he's come back because, yeah, of course he'd do that. And joining him is uh, Aaron Kazidis. And uh, according to them, Aaron is an award-winning game designer, artist, and writer who has worked on everything from first-person shooters like Medal of Honor, story games, Wolf Among Us, and casual mobile titles, Zynga Poker. Okay, that's uh, a varied repertoire, but uh, what exactly are you going to be doing about the game? Uh, yeah. Exercising the sunk cost fallacy, because that's basically <laughs> what this is, right? I don't even. Like, think, yeah. I think you're giving it more credit. I honestly think this is just a time buying thing. Like, oh, maybe the whatever recent wave of uh, negative reviews, just saying what the current state of the game is, will go over, and we can mm-hmm. go back to you know selling it without doing anything. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I mean, like, I've so I, I have I personally haven't played uh, Savage Lands. You two did at some point. We've launched um, it, and I got, uh, I got, I, yeah. yes. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm, I, I guess we have to like we straight up have to talk to someone who is actually in the active community for that. That, that doesn't to, exist. To get, that doesn't. You're exist. talking about fucking, fucking unicorns, abandoned. man. Unicorns. <laughs> yeah, they're like unicorns. Like with 1. Card. 7 average yeah. concurrent players according to Steam charts. So mm-hmm. yeah, she yeah, used so to play it, but it, a lot of people it, it, used it, to play it, but they haven't so done any updates. It's, it's straight up abandoned. Then yeah. yeah, so then this this basically becomes if if this is legit. Hey, we bought this abandoned game. Because we're gonna try and finish it because raisins. No, that's how you get Curse of the Ravens. Cry, ma'am. They work. might. <laughs> hey, listen. I hope we're completely wrong, and we do wish them the best. Something that dropped out of fucking nowhere. Now, listen. To start this off, a lot of people didn't even know this had a Linux port. It was a Linux beta. Mm-hmm. Pedro did. He dropped it on everyone uh, like Tuesday or something. I was like, I'm gonna play a little bit of it. It's Everspace because they're just like, fuck it. It's out now. Deal with it. Yep. Uh, it's been in beta for a couple of months, uh, like three or four months, actually. Uh, our Theron gave me a key for it back then. It's like, oh, yeah, it's really pretty, and it's Unreal Engine 4, and it uh, runs really well. There might be a couple of bugs here and there, but it runs really good. So I was like, okay. And I read it. The first time I tried to play it, I got stuck in an asteroid, and my ship wouldn't blow up. I was just stuck in the asteroid, so I let it sit for a while. And on Tuesday, you can actually go back and see the stream, uh, It's it works really well, and it looks really pretty. And yeah, it's good to see more uh, Unreal Engine 4 games on Linux, and especially ones like this, where, you know, Everything works correctly and it performs really, really well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was, up it, it does. It does. It does look nice. One thing I'm curious though is because it has the Vive support. Does it? No. Does it even work? No. Nope. It doesn't. They, they say that. And to, oh. to, to go fuck yourself when you get down to that point. Um. Yeah. No VR. Oh, that, that, support on Linux. Uh, go check out Pedro's video. It looks really good. It came off really well and. It's like, wait a minute, everyone needs to go look at that because it looks better than the damn trailers they have on their Steam page. And it looks a lot better than some of like his live stream capture. It looks better than a lot of recorded stuff I've seen uploaded to this game. It's just junky. So um, mm. what is it priced at? Twenty nine ninety nine. That's not on. It's not cheap. For, I, I, it's I mean, not like cheap. The, this, this, is, this is like a B plus grade game, though. And like it, this is something that I'd probably feel comfortable paying like 20, 30 bucks for. Possibly. If 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 only because of the production quality, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that could be a thing. So let's see. What do we have up next? Uh B quality. Who needs that? Let's go to straight to see. Re <laughs> resident Pedro, help me out, buddy. Help me out. Resident del Mal. Uh, or Resident Evil to the Dying Light mod, not mm-hmm. the actual game. Yeah. So uh someone 
it, some Spanish person, I'm guessing, uh, decided to sit down with the uh, Dying Light mod tools, and they're basically trying to recreate Raccoon City in Dying Light. It's it's still very early, according to the description. Uh, they say that uh, when it's finished, it's going to be set uh, during the initial infection period of Raccoon City. But uh, yeah, don't let Capcom hear that you're doing this, because they're going to sue somebody. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, man. Pedro, what are you trying to say? Some Spanish person, as, as a Spanish person. Is that something you can say and get away with it? I don't know, man. Spanish person. I think he can only discriminate. He's only allowed to discriminate against Mexican people. Not not even like Chilean people or like other Central South American people. Just, just Mexicans. Man, I'm tired um, of everyone smacking down on the Chilean people. They didn't do anything to anyone, man. No, the How about Argentinians? Argentinians? Don't don't cry for them. <laughs> anyway, this is a mod. It's free. It's 82 mags. Put it in your face. I couldn't get it to run, but I didn't try really hard. So you might have better success. Yeah, it didn't start on my end either. So mm. yeah. let us know. Uh, okay, Jordan, you had a little bit. Of, I know Empty had some squee over this this week. Oh, oh yeah. I'm I'm all excited for this too. Pillars of Eternity Deadfire. So you can go play it. You can buy it for 60 Canadian dollars. But to be fair, you're going to get quite. You're going to you're going to get like 30, 40 hours of gameplay out of this, so don't feel too bad about it. Um, this is this is the sequel to Pillars of Eternity, which we chairs on it a while ago, and this is sort of like we could we couldn't get the Dungeons and Dragons license, but we still want to make the new ball a new Baldur's Gate game, so we made our own rule set, we made our own setting, and away you go. It's cool too because you can even import your old character from Pillars of Eternity one in the true uh, SSI gold box tradition. And I still got to mm-hmm. finish that first one. God damn it. Um, the one major complaint I've seen about it, because I've been watching a couple of people stream it, um, is that the ship the ship encounter stuff is basically just a choose your own adventure novel that results in, oh, now you have to go do a fight. Um, the um, And yeah, it takes place on the Deadfire Archipelago. You sail around. You do. You play Baldur's Gate. That's what this is, this is here for. Yeah. Um, that that's really all I have to yeah. say about it. I'm I, I, I really <laughs> yeah, want to take a crack at it, but I, I I but I gotta finish that first game, right? I, I want the super high level dudes to come in and still get their ass kicked because they because this game will actually scale the difficulty based on your level. So hey, you know, I gotta ask this. I mean, is it fully yeah. voice acted? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, by the cast of by the cast of Critical Role, even if you're like me, I, I just asked everyone's question because I don't touch this period because I know I just know I wouldn't like it, but it's 45 gigs. So that's why I wanted to know where that data was. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm kind of with Jordan. It's like, yeah, I really want to play it, but I got to finish the first one first. And that is going to take me a while because it's a massive game. And if the second one is half as big as the first one, it's going to be a big one. According to MT, it took him about 20 hours. But that's still a significant time sink. Hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Uh, will it ever be done? Uh, Half Life Three, maybe? No. Uh, Borealis, Aurora Borealis, right here at this time of day in this location. Jordan's really putting well, a limiter. To, you really, you really got some autism moves tonight, baby. Uh, I, 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 I do. don't know if it's the Aurora, oh, but it's the official Project Borealis update number three. And yeah, format. they have. Yeah, they have uh, steady progress uh, uh, that they're working on with the gameplay itself. They've been working on basically getting all the animation timings and the way that the that Unreal Freeman moves to be the exact same as uh, Source uh, Freeman. So it's basically they're trying to get everything as close as possible to how Half-Life 2 would have done it. Improving on what they feel is necessary, but uh, yeah, they've also got uh, that bit you're looking at right now if you're watching the video version. It's uh, a little demo scene that they created of one of the areas that they're working on, and it looks nice. Hmm. It does. Uh, they they are uh, looking for some people, uh, specifically like uh, visual effects people, uh, particle artists, and whatnot. Uh, if you have any type of uh, visual design chops, get in touch with them because they kind of need you. Hmm. And level design, they, they, level design too. They, 
They need a lot of people. If you look at the openings at the bottom of the Reddit post, they yeah. need 2D artists, 3D artists, game lead functionality programmers, so they don't have they don't even have mm-hmm. someone who can program yet. Uh, web dev for their website, sound designer. It's 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 quite a bit. It's a big undertaking. And the real tragedy of this is you're gonna have a ton of like super passionate fans um putting in like a ton of time and effort mm-hmm. into this. And it's gonna suck if it if it <laughs> even gets produced. <gasps> prove prove me wrong, Project Royale. Make this like the actual Half-Life 3. I want to come out of that game being like, oh my god, I have like I am changed as a person because of your mod, but you Let's gotta, be real. You gotta look pretty, at the upside. This will at least be done, and we'll be able to try it before they finish the Zen map. Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I don't doubt <laughs> that. <laughs> All right. Let's get the fuck up out of here. All right. Coming up next, we got we got a lot of graphics card news this week. So uh, let's let's get on over to there to the news section. This week. On the news segment, Lies. we talk about things. But before we get to that, we need to introduce our very own, uh, I don't know, Canadian person, Jordan Swang. I, I wait, had wait, something, wait, 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 but I lost it. Are you trying to the syrup canoe <laughs> no, himself? You, 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 yeah, the syrup canoe. Come on, Pedro. Come on. <laughs> See, why do we even pay him? And you, you know what? You, you can you can feel an equal amount of disappointment about his salary by going to page, by going to linuxdfs.com. Click in the support button. Do not. We and, repeat. Do not go to syrupcanoe.com. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, after we're done this segment, I am totally fucking registering syrupcanoe.com. No. <laughs> syrupcanoe.horse. You know, and you know what? Folks, you can help fund that shit. LinuxGameCast.com, click the support button, buy stuff through our affiliate links. Maybe, maybe click, give us some Bitcoin, PayPal donations, whatever. We'll, we'll if you're gonna throw stuff that our way, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it hard. Maybe Frank will uh, show you some love too. You can also head on over to Patreon.com/LinuxGameCast, where you can support us week after week after week. Um, I don't think we got any new uh, Patreons this week, do we? No, no. But the. No, but the the lot of you are still freaking awesome, giving us money week in week out. You can get all sorts of cool shit, like uh, getting early show note access, access to uncut vods of our let's plays a couple days early. You can even buy your way on the goddamn show. Maybe. Of course, at any level, you get access to the Discord, which is the hot shit. It's you got the Discord. Maybe maybe these fine crazy people want to uh, listen to a spoiler cast of uh, Infinity War. <laughs> Oh yeah, we, we we got that pre pre super shows in where we just talk about bullshit before we go live. Mm-hmm. Be a little fly on the wall on that business. Get that at any level with uh, Patreon as well. Lots of good stuff. Yep. Just, just toss us a couple bucks. It's cool. It's awesome. Uh, You're supporting we, a questionable a, cause. Feel feel good knowing that, right? L- l- listen, I, 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 again, you're helping us pay Pedro to fail at his job. We're gonna finally get him that surgery. Uh, what surgery? It involves jalapenos. Exactly. I'll take it. <laughs> and cake. Jalapenos spelled with <laughs> jalapenos spelled ketchup with cake. And, and, <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, um, Intel Integrated Graphics are about to get a kick in the balls. What's that, Frank? You came all the way back from hell. <laughs> no. To show off Wait, Frank, Frank didn't go to hell. <laughs> Frank, Frank's been shut out in hell for like two weeks. Wasn't man. he at the gym? Multiple layers of hell. All right. Starting you know? a war? Starting a nuclear war? Hey, man, we just want to thank everyone who is on Frank's fuck wall, find upstanding cannibals, people who have picked up things off of our wish zone, enabling cheat mode for us, because, hey, man, that's really cool to build out the studio. We're way ahead of schedule. Thank you so much, everyone there. I just want to give him a plug. Hey, man, check it out. It's the thing. Mm-hmm. Now... Now, because I don't want Frank fucking me up, all right? I don't want to be halfway through this news segment and catch, like, a fucking bony-ass hand to the back of the neck judo chop. Listen, I want Frank fucking me. I mean, what? I mean, (laughs) Intel video card. Someone talk about it. Let's talk about it. Team Blue. (laughs) Team Blue. Not Blue. Blue. Could NVIDIA face a new competition in the gaming GPU market? Yes, they fucking could, man. All signs point to yes, because Raja bounced over there, and Intel's straight up nomming... You know, the uh, CPU, GPU Jesus, basically. He's came over there mm-hmm. from tw- uh, Twesla. English, man. We're fucking this <laughs> up. But we need this. We need this uh, so hard that I can taste it, man. But, you know, this is a bit of a uh, speculationville that 
Intel would come out with their own discrete piece of kit. And they're saying they're going to reveal something in 2019. I think that's a wee optimistic. Um, I personally believe that NVIDIA could definitely do with some competition. Also, my favorite thing about this entire thing, outside of Intel's really good with their open source drivers, really good with that. But uh, having an Intel GPU with an AMD CPU will straight up <laughs> fucking short circuit some of the fan humans out there. They, 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 they just poof. Listen, listen, awesome. and I, I honestly, I think that Intel's going to be like, oh yeah, it's dedicated, but it only works with like the specific chips, chipset and up. Or you got to be using an Intel CPU because Intel has pulled the scummy shit before. Like, I, I would not be surprised if there was some weird restriction about requiring. Uh, I don't. I don't know. You need like a Intel part of me agrees module. with you because they were pulling yeah. like semi scummy shit with their Optane drives right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You got to have an Intel chipset in order to be able to use Optane. Yeah, but it's uh, well, they already have a prototype that they showed couple months year or so ago uh which was the compute uh discrete card that they had dedicated gpu uh, they actually have a picture on the article uh but yeah that was just a prototype it's not going to be a production model uh, and it is 100 percent a compute unit because there are no display outs so we'll have Yet. to see yeah <laughs> we'll have to see what they actually come out with and um just how close that dedicated GPU is going to be to, say, a uh, Radeon GPU. And, and I mean, I'm pretty sure that, uh, like, the, given the market that Intel targets, uh, these are going to be, like, business intelligence, enterprise, machine learning-focused GPUs. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they'll probably work. If they, if they support OpenGL and Vulkan, they'll probably perform fine because you need that similar performance profile when you're doing, like, deep learning and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. But... but um, I do want to say this, that, 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 all, that, that also, the, the price is probably going to be insane because it's Intel. Uh, I don't yeah. I, I don't know if they can get away with that, man, because you've seen they've they're prematurely are like rolling back on a lot of basically all the chips that they designed before Ryzen, all the fuck you because that why chips. Intel's like, shit, mm -hmm. all right, we actually have to compete? Motherfucker, <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> so they got the thing going down. I don't think that they can walk into a new market segment discrete GPUs uh, with that same attitude. And I think even Intel knows they can't pull that shit, that they're going to have to walk out there with something priced competitively against Intel's offering. Like, shut up, talk about AMD. When they make something that'll compete with NVIDIA, I will. Um, yeah. Bob's your uncle. It's, uh, yeah, no, and uh, from what Jordan said, yeah, they, right now, the focus will probably be on the whole graphical compute uh, side of things and there's probably not going to be a consumer version with display outs that you could choose for your games but seeing how the nvidia titan v not the geforce just the regular uh nvidia titan v which nvidia was very clear to say this is a compute card yes it's the best gaming card out there right now but uh it's a compute card. I'm guessing that Intel has the resources to pull that off. Well, listen, man. Hey, it's going to have displays on the back. They're all just going to be Thunderbolt. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a thing. <laughs> but here, listen, I, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to what AMD is going to do with Navi. I, I want to see how that plays mm -hmm. out. And more importantly, I just want to thank Jordan for buying that 1080 Ti. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, because NVIDIA without, were without just fail. waiting for without you. Without fail. <laughs> and, and so, every uh, fucking time. Ugh. It's not an official announcement just yet. This comes from WCCF well, did, 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 Didn't you just hear me? I said, Jordan bought a 1080 Ti. <laughs> this is, this, you can take this shit to the bank now that this is 100%. <laughs> yeah, basically. So WCCF Tech put out an article saying... NVIDIA GTX 1170 price, performance, specs, and release date, all preliminary uh, things. We don't know if these are fact just yet. NVIDIA hasn't confirmed one way or the other, but chances are WCCF Tech have been pretty much on point with these uh, quote-unquote leaks. So uh, it's probably a safe bet Eight to say to that... 16 gigabytes of GDDR. Oh, fuck, yeah. they made it to six. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, mm. 
Yeah. Uh, oh. And the like the performance deltas that you see from like the similar like okay, the, you have the 1070 which performed uh, basically like the original Titan X, and you have the 1170 which basically performs like Jordan's brand new GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, <laughs> the, the 1170 is that good, and the 1180. Well, they're saying according to the um, the performance numbers that they have, take those with a grain of salt, obviously. But at 2560 by 1440 resolution, I'm not entirely sure which game they were using to do this. But uh, yeah, it, the 1180 scored 183 points compared to the Titan XP's 160. Now, it's something we do want to think about, though, is uh, 1440 really, is, is that worth, I know that's where things start bottlenecking. At the CPU. Uh, th that's where the shift goes from the CPU to the GPU, yes. Hmm. <laughs> so, it'll be interesting to see. Interesting times ahead, because worst case scenario, 780s and 1080s are going to get cheap. Period. You're welcome, by the way. Like no, book. thank you. You're all uh, fucking welcome. <laughs> Uh, I, I immediately put in that in our Discord when you're like, shit, all right, I spent the money. I was like, oh, sweet, I'm getting one sooner than I expected. Um, and... <laughs> no, I, I, dude, I, I called that shit when I pulled the trigger on that. I'm I like, know, and I immediately and... thanked you for it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. With, without fail. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any piece of technology I have bought. That has the 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 better follow up, better cheaper follow up has been released, or there's either or if I if I early adopt, massive manufacturing defect. It's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So Unity, our favorite. Well, wouldn't say favorite, but definitely the game engine that we play the most games of on Linux. Uh, they have put out the 2018.2 beta. And it's a beta for the editor, so if you are a Unity game developer, by all means, go ahead and help them test, unless you really are serious about the game that you're putting out, at which point you should stick with 2018.1. But um, the new beta comes with a couple of things. Uh, it has uh, high DPI support on the editor, and there are some particle uh, system improvements, which uh, they say will allow for... A lower latency when it comes to generating the shader and applying it to whichever texture you happen to be applying it to. Uh, and that will probably result in better performance. It's uh, They actually have uh, quite a few issues, but then mm -hmm. there's a big one. Yes. <laughs> Make it stuff up, man. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, I think we've almost run all the traction out of DX12's The Future, bro. Because no, <laughs> yeah, only the DX12 most, is dead. <laughs> the, the most diehard and delusional <laughs> amongst them are still like DX12. Listen, uh, listen go this, ahead. this time, 2019, DirectX 12 is the future. It is the future. Fuck all you. <laughs> but until then, to help <laughs> us fill that gap, um, the Unity editor, editor, straight up, they rolled out uh, Vulcan support for the Linux editor. It's there. So, question mark? Yeah. Because Vulcan, we've learned, is a really cool tool. It's really neat, and it allow, it's very performant. It's also very fucking dangerous, hashtag Tomb Raider. And when implemented, <laughs> uh, not 100%. That's well, the I, thing I with that Unity being Baby's I, first game engine, because if they can implement Vulcan in a, say, uh, a good enough way in the editor itself it means that the quote-unquote developers of asset flips uh <laughs> they can actually they won't have to deal with the vulcan bits and it should work better but they have to implement it really well at the editor level which well and that's what i was that's what i was saying when vulcan systems. was first announced it's it's the yeah. same thing with mantle right when they're like oh it's low level api I had zero doubt in my mind that you cannot trust developers with low-level access because they don't know what the hell they're doing. They think they know what they're doing. But unless you're unless you're a psychopath from Croatia, you probably don't. And even then, they fuck up things a lot. They do fuck up things, yeah, but you, you got to give crew team some credit, though, because they are out there helping people with it. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm not I'm not faulting Croteen for any of that shit. I'm just saying that as good as they are, they make some big mistakes sometimes. It's official. It's unavoidable. Canada yeah. has and an official grudge unity. against Croatia. Solely because of Vulcan. <laughs> Bring it on, Croatia. Unity. I'll fight you. 1v1 me. Unity has a bad history of uh, taking stuff that works relatively well, uh, attempting to implement it, and then say, you know what, fuck it, we'll just do it our own way, and it turns out even worse. The input system. They tried to implement SDL2 at some point. How did that go, Natasha? How did that go? Listen, man, well, they learned from the fucking mistakes. <laughs> that's the thing. So, <laughs> moving on from Vulcan to Windows. More and... Vulcan. Vulcan. Yeah, uh, yes. DXVK. It's it's the new hotness. DVDA, playing games online. great band. Love them. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, what would Brian Boitano do? He'd <laughs> reverse engineer DirectX 11. Clearly. In Vulcan. Yeah. Because he's a fucking crazy person. Now, this is uh, version not 0.5. Um, they've added some fixes for... Um, they've added some performance improvements for uh, RAD-V. Uh, they've added a little bit of improvements what for... What the hell GPUs. is Skyrim Short Bus Edition? Is that a thing? Special, special <laughs> edition. Skyrim it's, the, it's, the fucking, it's, it's the DirectX 11 re-release when well, ever yeah. since Obsidian realized, hey, we can just release Skyrim over and over again and people will just buy it. But that's not Obsidian, but yeah. Or whatever, Obsidian. <laughs> whoever, whoever. Uh, no, Obsidian actually makes good games these days, which is yeah. a bit of a part Linux of games. Doing before. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but they got a uh, bunch of bug fixes as well for Batman, Arkham City. Let's see when I'm going to play that on, uh, on Linux. Uh, Dishonored, Far Cry, Mortal Kombat X, Witcher 3. I'm actually trying to get that working. Uh, Strider, I got a bug report for you, by the way. A hot, <laughs> steamy bug report for ooh, you. Ooh. I'll, follow that. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll follow that sometime later. Maybe, maybe this is the first time that Lutris has just straight up outright bailed me. We'll talk about that a little bit later, sweetie. Don't worry about that. If you don't know what yeah. DXVK is, as, as was mentioned before, it is, they've, it's the hotness. If you're playing the games under wine, you want the DirectX 11 support. You don't want the overhead of doing the uh, DirectX 11 to OpenGL translation. Mm-hmm. Hey, this implements all of DirectX 11 in a Vul- uh, using Vulkan. So library submits a call, re- returns back what uh, the game expects, and away you go. So on a scale and of like new features of added to something that we've addressed on the show, well, what's new in this version? There's some bug fixes, right? Far Cry, Mortal Kombat, Skyrim, SE, which is not regular yeah. Skyrim, mm-hmm. uh, The Witcher, and uh, Swap Chain, all that issues. That's neat. It was fun watching uh, Strider, the developer of Lutris, who's here, uh, <laughs> enabling this in Lutris earlier this week in Discord because it was just like screenshot after screenshot. It's like, oh, oh, I'm going to heretic all the things, man. It, it was delightful <laughs> to watch. But yeah, the XVK has one added extra bonus because Vulcan has uh, new-ish, it's very basic still, but it has HLSL shader support, which means uh, those shaders that still don't work in regular wine and wine staging will work with the XVK, which means quite a few games that don't work on those other versions of wine will work with the XVK. So yes, Lutris right now... Is doing a better job than anything else of getting Windows games to work on Linux. Hmm. Good job, Strider. Except, unless, <laughs> unless, unless that game is Witcher 3. I mean, seriously, what do you think and he is? I- a peasant? <laughs> yes, absolutely. He's the most peasant. And finally, put a bow on it. Battle for Wesnoff. They talked about the Steam release, and now it is available on their webpage. Uh, 1.14, the new Horizons update. They got a bunch of new stuff. They added some 4K art for the menu so that it looks all nice. They added mm-hmm. a couple additional campaigns, some new art, multiplayer support. Uh, they mentioned that it... Uh, no, they don't necessarily imply a Steam integration, which would be a little bit of a nice touch, but a little difficult to uh, to uh, implement via the uh, GPL stuff that they use. Um and yeah, they they uh, they're adding some support so that uh, Steam Workshop and uh, other content creation um, avenues are better supported under Battle for Wesnoth. And of course, this is available on every single distribution's repository, so you can probably just download it. I didn't realize yeah, this thing was yeah. available for iOS. Damn. All right, that's the thing. Well, again, it's one of those games that's been around for like decades. They've they've got around to probably mm-hmm. making their code base as portable as possible. You would have to think, though, out of principle. You would have to make a Windows phone build. 
to be to be fair, they're using SDL. They're using SDL two now. Uh, they finally kicked uh, SDL one point two to the curb. So now shit will just work. Period. Oh yeah, you're right. That'll never yeah, get up and you running can on have Windows. All the touch screens now. <laughs> yep. Cool beans. Yep. Uh, uh, I, I, pl- I played I played Tomb Raider with like six touch screens, bro. This, hey man, <laughs> that sounds truly horrifying. Uh, much like this segment. So let's get us out. Yeah, coming up next, Trailblazers. We're throwing chairs at it. Brilliant. Nailed it. Stuck the landing. Okay. Well, we got no pot to blaze it, but I guess we got a trail. Four twenty heel swag. Trailblazers. Yeah, that's it's twenty nine ninety nine. You know the swag, man. Ooh, that's this is from uh, Super Super Gonk. It's developed on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for the aforementioned twenty nine ninety nine. Unless you're in Canada, then you're paying thirty five bucks <laughs> for this game. <laughs> Yes, fuck Canada. <laughs> so what, what? what is it? Trailblazers is an innovative cooperative racer with groundbreaking on-track gameplay. Race in teams up to three versus three. Players paint the track to create the base, best racing line, then use the paint to boost up to insane speed. Drive with flair, woo! And style to gain skill points and blaze your way to victory. Man, now no, no, I just want to smoke with dupe. God damn it. Anyways, uh, the fine folks at Rising Star Games sent us some keys for this. Thank you very much. And we're going to subject it to the Chairquisition. What's that? It's where we take a game and we uh, play it. We talk about it and we do a little quality assurance that maybe they should have done before putting it on sale for 35 Canadian dollars. Anyways, we do this by going to the uh, Chairquisition slide. One chair means it's garbage, which is like an F grade, I guess. Two chairs means that it's okay, which is... or. Which is, I guess, not quite a decrease. One through like four, baby. It's, it's pretty simple. We do this every week. Yeah. And we have yeah. some categories of doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mixed with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. Uh, so let's uh, kick this off. Then, uh, this game had some interesting issues getting up and running. Didn't it? If by issues you mean it's fucking busted. Now, it's, <laughs> keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is slightly less busted than it was when it originally released because they threw out a patch, like, right over the line, right at the last minute on Friday. Um, on Humbuntu 1710, uh, running that with a 980 NVIDIA business, uh, Ryzen 7, uh, still broken after this patch, man. So I was wondering, you can see Pedro's not painting, but when I'm driving around, everything gets painted. And this is the mm-hmm. big mechanic of this game because, you know, that's how you get your boost. That's how you get your boost on. I noticed that my boost is a regular. Went to the forums and I'm like, oh yeah, it's a rendering bug. It looks like you're always painting, so you can't tell. You can't tell where the track is actually painted or not. And this comes into effect later on in the game. I'll bring that up. Latest patch did not fix it on my end. That kind of sucks. Uh, let's see. What did they fix? Okay. Up until Friday, it did not save your progress and it did not save your resolution settings. It now saves your progress. One out of two is not bad. It lies to you, and it, you think it saves your resolution settings, but it doesn't. It just max defaults as soon as you go into the game. Whatever your highest resolution is available. Um, that's a thing, which is kind of irritating if you want to play it at 1080p because I have an old crusty 980. I don't have this new 1080 hotness that the other kids have, so I can only play it at 1080p to maintain my 60 FURPS. Uh, let's see, performance, speaking of that, solid 60, everything on 11 at 1080p, what you would expect at 30 at 2160. So I'm going to say, even with the main mechanic busted, you can still fuck around and have a little bit of fun with it, and I can technically get things running. I'll throw it a solid 2, that's the best I can do. Yeah, inconsistent boost. Uh, if you're suffering from inconsistent boost, please go consult your doctor, and maybe some pills you can <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, everything, the, the, the aforementioned bugs that Ven was talking about were present up until Friday. I'm, I am running into that issue where it will constantly paint your track, regardless of whether or not you're hitting the A button or not. So that's enough to ding it a chair. I forgot to do that in the show notes. I'll do that right now. Derp. And, uh, yeah, on, uh, Fedora 28, 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, this thing damn well better get 60 fps at uhd and it does otherwise otherwise i'm gonna be i'm gonna be mad at you game at, at this point if i'm not getting awesome performance out of your game guys you 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 have fucked up there is no more excuses there i'll give this i'll give it uh, three chairs 
Yeah. Pedro. Well, uh, the patch on Friday fixed the issues I was having, which was the game not saving my progress. Yes, the game released without the ability to save the progress that you've made, but they fixed that. And they also fixed the uh, whatever stupid resolution the game was defaulting to, because on my end, it's just, oh, you have a 1080p screen? Boom, full screen 1080. That's all I want. I don't ask for much. Well, I do, but whatever. Uh, over here on Solus 39996. Ironically, uh, it, it would be fucking Solus that this thing runs right on. It, uh, yeah, it runs pretty good with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. So four cheers for me. Hmm. Well, that's three cheers for mix with the working. How about shiny and sounds? I, you know what? Cell shading really does help hide a lot of the flaws in the visuals. And this game actually does look pretty nice while it's whooshing around. Um, the soundtrack has some love, and I kind of nuked that right away because it was not doing anything for me. I threw a podcast in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wickety, wickety. What? Anyways, uh, the character designs are all unique, um, though a lot of the dialogue, oh man, there. this is a dialogue freaking heavy racing game. Is a dialogue uh, heavy with without any voice this. acting? Mm-hmm. This is this is also true. It's what you look for in a what, racing what is game? This pill- now, what is this? Pillars of Eternity one? Am I right? <laughs> High five? No, no. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I mean that that that's all competently done. Like there there was definitely some effort put into this. I'll give it a solid three cheers for that. Right. Pedro, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, well. I can, in spoilers, I will leverage a lot of criticism at this game, but the graphics look nice. Uh, they do. It's, uh, well, they look nice if you're just wishing along. The moment you hit something or one of the opponent's ships hits you, there's a lot of jank to those animations. Uh, it's, um, it's, it could be better. Is what I'm saying for uh, 30 pounds because they actually priced it, but more on that later. But for 30 pounds, I kind of expected a little bit better animations. The sounds are also on par with generic racing game 26,543,739 that you will find on Steam. It's basically an infestation at this point. It didn't particularly blow me out of the water. Yes, you can see things and you can hear things and you mostly hear grunts from the characters as the uh, dialogue goes along in the quote-unquote cutscenes. So, two chairs for me. It's thing, man. Look at it. It is cel-shaded, like the J-Man brought up. So if you ever wanted to know what would happen if Borderlands fucked a flying car, here it is. Right for you. I don't know why, but the soundtrack with the Wiki Wiki and all this bit, this is, it just straight up reminds me of the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, maybe just the late 90s in general with that business um each character has like one or two things like oh ow and like that they just repeat ad nauseum that genuinely caused me to nope the audio that and up until the patch you couldn't cut off the fucking soundtrack to this thing which is short and necessarily not all that sweet but hey man it doesn't look bad i i kind of like the art style i'm digging that not much to say on shiny and sounds. I mean, nothing to ding it graphically unless you consider the game-breaking mechanic, which is a graphical glitch that enters your further progression in the game. An issue, which I might. So I'll throw it a uh, solid three on that. All right, well, that's uh, two chairs for shiny and the sounds. Up next is Control. Pedro, Steam input not working for you? Uh, no. No, it isn't. Uh, so... One of the things I will cut a game some slack for is, okay, so you're not letting me rebind controls, but most of the controls are fine, and if you are a controller-focused game, at least let me use the Steam uh, input functionality to remap the uh, buttons that I'm not too happy with. Uh, I also even got a a teeny tiny controller right here. It's blinking right now. Uh, That I got because, you know, my right hand isn't all that big, and... Like this, I can actually reach all the buttons. Uh, This game, on the other hand, changing the controller layout uh, on Steam's uh, controller configuration makes fucking all difference. The game itself has no rebindable controls. There is no way to change uh, anything through Steam. Uh, It doesn't support the keyboard. Uh, Acceleration is R2, or right trigger, whichever, the default key to paint is A, and if I, with my right hand, am trying to 
reach for both R2 and A, this game caused me wrist pain while trying to play it. It's one chair. And what? what? <laughs> I listen, uh, man. You gotta put me to sleep buddy. during those segments, man. Uh, no, check this business out. Uh, what does it do? Zero zero keyboard support, ladies and gentlemen. That's the thing. So get used to it. I mean, you can't even escape. The only keyboard support this has is the Vulcan nerve pinch. You can throw it an Alt F four, and it will respond accordingly. Steam controller works out of the box. No issues there. Uh, logically laid out. Fortunately, since like Pedro pointed out, you can't fucking rebind anything because this is 2018, question mark. So, yeah, uh, solid three on that, but yeah, you, you, you kind of ding it because guess what? If your Steam controller times out, the only way out of the game is with that Alt F4. Uh, so I tried this play out with uh, both the dual, uh, Bluetooth paired dual sh- or, uh, Steam controller as well as the uh, DualShock 4. Got so many props, it's great. Um, everything's like Ben said, laid out logically. Uh, right trigger accelerate, a, a paint, although you can't really tell if you're painting or not, other than the fact that all of a sudden you'll randomly go fast for some reason. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a solid four. I mean, uh, th- this the controls are not where I take fault with the game, but we'll get to that hmm. in the next section. So that's two chairs, troll up next. Fun. Ben, do you have fun? I'm going to take this, man. Check this. A single player has a few tracks artificially inflated because they kind of count mirrored and reversed as additional tracks. Mm-hmm. Plus, you get the uh, benefit of some brain-dead AI. Uh, Forever Alone mode can get very lonely because um, multiplayer, it's basically just non-existent for this title. I do have cross-platform play enabled. And basically, I, I set up a lobby and I waited just like a honeypot. Tried to get it in there before the pre-pre super shows, and turns out I couldn't do it because the Steam controller times out after 15 minutes of me waiting in the lobby. Still no matches. Didn't happen. Um, as Jordan pointed out, primary game mechanic, and I mentioned in the working, the painting the track is still borked on this end, and I'm running 1710. It's not a crazy moon distribution. Uh, it seems to be rendering that glitch, causing that paint for 24-7. You don't know where you could boost. You don't know where you can. Later in the game, that boost is required to win, and good luck telling what is and what is not real. Um, so, there's that. That's reality and what it's about. So, I think this last part... I kind of want to talk to the developers. Maybe not the publishers, but the developers. Because I really want you to listen to what I'm about to say kind of hard as you fucking can. You lot want 30 wet, stinky American caches for this. Do you know what $30 is? Question mark. Because I need to explain to you. Uh, To me, that's $10 more than fucking Rocket League. Okay. A, a game that people who don't even like racing games or car game, fucking Jordan plays it. It doesn't have a bad time. This has none of those features. None. What this is, Brad, at the end of the day, is $10 more than Rocket League. And that's really all that matters. That's what people are going to see when they look at this. So I'm going to say, you know, if and when you manage to unfuck this hot mess, uh, at least on the Linux version, you're going to have a really fun little derp around racing game that multiplayer you can get people in and uh, have some fun with it. But I think this is something that falls like squarely in the 999 evil when it does handstands bracket. Uh, and you could build a nice little community with that because seriously, man, whoever decided on this price point for something that it's well done, it's competently done, but it, it, it's not sliced chainsaws, man kind of incompetent in their job or even worse malicious trying to tank this because this has not picked up any steam whatsoever so you know current state and i feel safe saying this is you you get one chair because the game's still broken and it's been out almost a week now honestly i mean as as far as racist games go it's it's all right that's about all i can say you got to paint the ground like I, I somehow was able to win against the pants on head retarded AI. So, you know, it makes me feel super confident and good at the game when really it's just you know the AI is really really dumb. Makes me feel like a real smarty. Um, yeah. So you basically drive around, slam into walls, paint stuff, 
I guess they got the Splatoon thing going for it. A Splatoon was a racing game. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, yeah, there's just a lot of dialogue in this game that I just don't care about and end up skipping past. Uh, it really makes me want to uh, race through it. Some some real trailblazing humor right there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't have much to say about this game. It's a mediocre racing game. I don't absolutely hate it in the same capacity that I hate, say, F1 or Derp Rally. Actually, I kind of like Derp Rally because at least I was starting to get the hang of Derp Rally. This is just square within that meh category, and I can't really do much about that, so I'll give it two chairs. Yeah. Again, playing this game caused me physical pain and forced me to consider that grippy thing, that mechanical claw that uh, Tim uh, mentioned in last week's hate You just mail. need a dialing wand. I need something because this game, even with a teeny tiny controller, reminded me of my own shortcomings as a human being. Well, the physical ones anyway. Uh, I don't think it would have helped much, but, you know, maybe having a way to actually play this game that the way that developers wanted me to because there's no way in hell I'm going to play it how I wanted to because they don't let me rebind controls. Well, it wouldn't have been such a slap in the face for people like myself who have less than ideal right hands to have an option to rebind those keys. But hey, that's not what we got. Remember last week when I wondered if uh, it would be too much to ask if this game didn't suck? I think they were listening. They were listening and decided to make it the worst possible game for me specifically. Also, 30 pounds is not the same as $30. 30 pounds is like $36. What the fuck kind of pricing model is that? One chair. It's a a bold strategy, Cotton. That's called fuck you, give me money. Yeah, And that's uh, one chair for fun. This this uh, trail brothers trail brothers trail brothers uh, streaks by <laughs> yeah, streaks by with a uh, two chairs uh, that uh, that's another show title for you. At least um, I said it during the episode. I'm going to pose this yeah. question. Let, let's say this goes 95 percent off. Would you recommend picking it up then? For like six eh? pounds, sure. Hmm. Yeah. Not yeah. 30, though. Fuck that. All right. I don't know. I know it's going to have a rough time because I even checked in the forums. There, there's not even people white knighting this thing. So there That's is so that. Good. You got to have a decent yeah. little arcade racer hidden under this. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, there is a game hidden under all these issues. They have to do something about them, though. Pedro, you should just be grateful I mean, and accept what... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Haven't you learned anything? You're Linux. You don't get to complain if the game sucks. All right, <laughs> let's suck on that. Yeah, you, you, we we really don't. <laughs> Just like this podcast, it sucks. Coming up next, mm-hmm. we talk about Twitch bits. We're getting we're getting we're we're getting on that train. Give Woo-hoo. us bits, guys. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's boys daytime. And Catch on fire. Between. It's daytime, Burn. but the blinds are closed. So, yeah, I'm not going to catch on fire anytime (laughs) soon. Uh, We're mainlining our hate mailing, so you lot need to step up your game because we haven't been getting a lot of that hate mail I'm so very much a fan of. So, uh, let me see. Motherfucker, you just sit back and wait until they watch this episode. It's going to come funny. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, yeah, LinuxGameCast.com, contact button. There's a forum. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little drop downy thing. Uh, fill it out. Let us know what you think, what you hate, what you love. Don't tell us what you love. We're probably just going to end up mocking the things that you like. You can ask Jordan for some relationship advice if you are so inclined. Uh, if you want to, if you are a game developer and you want to send us some keys, you can. Just make sure to include at least three. Or if you just have a little teeny tiny tar GZ type thing with your game, just let us share it between the three of us. Sound good? All right. Nope. So, uh, no. Not good. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, mm. So this itch keys. Does itch, does, does itch do keys? <laughs> I want, like, the nine-part GOG bin fuck you that they make you go through that roll and download. 
Only available through God Galaxy because that's a thing sometimes with multiplayer. They're like, yeah, you can't yeah. multiplayer. I, I, in, in I know God exactly Galaxy. why they're doing it too. It's for it's for 32 bit operating systems, just because they have that file size uh, limit. Mm. It's nightmare fuel. Like our first piece, actually, we, we only have one little right in. But uh, who is it? Mm-hmm. The or not there. Uh, the TRN. The Thetran. The Thetran. <laughs> okay. A little bit of a list. Uh, serious question, guys. Incoming NVIDIA 2 or 11? And 11. 11 cards and exploding crypto bubble will flood the market with used 10 series. Jesus, I can't read too much light. Um, <laughs> would you Pepso, Pepsi? Pepsi challenge? Uh, cheap used mining card, question mark. Hate the show, die in a fire. Um, Ming card, man. Ming. It's okay, like running that through cards the... Made uh, out of porcelain. <laughs> Translatotron, which I just invented. Uh, would you buy mining cards since that shit's about to get cheap? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, odds are there's nothing uh, particularly wrong with them. Other than being run yeah. at full fuck mothering tilt 24 7. But for how yeah, long not, is my yeah. sticking point? 30 minutes. If the listing says. If the okay, yeah. <laughs> if it's been run full tilt for six months, here's the thing, Pedro. It I might probably, as well be thirty minutes because no motherfuckers are going to give you the truth. They'll be like, "Yeah, I, I used it once. It's brand new mining. What are you talking about? No, why? Why am I selling eighteen of them? Because I got a lot of computers. Yeah, this was not mm-hmm. mining. Yeah, I'm sexually it's a uh, video it, cards. It's if it That's was run full tilt for question. six months, sure. If it's been running full tilt for a year, no. Jordan? Honestly, I just dropped $1,300 on a video card, so I'm not buying anything <laughs> from the, for the foreseeable future. <laughs> so, fuck you. I don't know, man. Uh, listen, it depends on how cheap's cheap. So, that's the way I gotta look at it. If somebody walked if, up... If it's like that uh, power and, supply thing, the APCs? I, I was getting to that, but <laughs> anyway, uh, d- define cheap, cheap. And we're not talking like, oh, I could save a hundred dollars. Like, no, if somebody walked out and they're like, knock, knock, man, here's a 1080 TI, which let's say you're not going to get a TI. You might get a 1080, um, for 200 bucks, mm, questionable history, non-transferable warranty. I might take a gamble on that, but outside of that, mm-hmm. mm-mm. I don't think I'd do it, man, because you could get something that's going to die, and you just ask it well. So, yeah. Oh. Hmm. For sure, for, for sure, for sure. And, I, like, I, I don't know, though. Like, what what is the capacity of these cards that have been being run full tilt for, like, fucking for eight months to a year, eight, nine months to a year? I don't know, because people were get, trying to get on that bubble, like, recently, too, so... Well, they did, and anybody like who's intelligent with their mining factored in the depreciation of that when they flipped it just but it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to flip stuff right now because you're going to get mm-hmm. that nope tsunami of not only you know the bubble popping quite a bit and but also with like ethereum with nvidia rolling out I'm like hey man we're about to release a whole new series yeah those cards about to get stupid cheap yeah indeed so the moral of the story is be like me feel dumb about your recent purchase oh man and it's <laughs> The eleven hundreds are coming. <laughs> you're welcome. You're you're all welcome. Mm, keep, keep keep going, buddy. <laughs> and, and, and anyone, anyone me joy, by, ladies by, and by, gentlemen. By, by the way, you, you, you want to send us some email? Anyone want to buy a used nine eighty? <sighs> <laughs> Let's just go ahead and cue the nipple rubbing music. You can always find us around nine thirty Eastern Standard Moon Time or Eastern uh, D Time. I don't know what that is. Giggity hot. At Vin Stone, Twitter, check me out there. Vin Stone, Google, it happens. It's been sexy. I'm Jordan Spong. I'm like many, many merchants in a role playing game. I am desperate to sell you stuff for double the price that I bought it. Wait, what? No, that's not right. Hmm. You can find me at Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan Spong on Google Plus. When Jordan always sells at double the price. Most of the games I play, it's like three times the price, so <laughs> buy from Jordan. He sells cheap. I, on the other hand, am not so cheap. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus better Mateos on Google Plus. Okay, what what hot bullshit is this, Pedro? You are the cheapest whore 
I have ever had the displeasure of. I'm not gonna. I'm the poorest okay. whore. It's different. Okay. Hey, look, credits. Dying if I remember. <laughs> That's so sweet, then. No, oh. I hate you. <laughs> and this is I, news listen, now. <laughs> listen, dude, you're gonna get that. You're gonna get that 1180 fucking for like 500 bucks. <laughs> And you, you don't have to pay the fuck you Canada price either, so... If they're 500 bucks, I'm going to buy two just to spite you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but buy two and just, like, drown one in mayonnaise just so that it can't be used. Basically. <laughs> so resell it as the Airwolf uh, special No, no, edition. I'm going to install it with the 8150. <laughs> I mean, it's perfectly serviced to a gaming computer. <laughs> Hey, thanks all ah. the patrons. You're rolling by. I think we got some fuckos coming up. Find upstanding cannibals. Yeah. Make it all this possible. Uh, thanks for putting up with our crazy horseshit show. Uh, we, we enjoy oh, it. Oh, yeah. We enjoy oh, doing man. it. Man, we should, we should actually see if we should get we can get Chuck Tingle to show up. Because he's doing the podcast now. Hmm. Hmm. Speaking, speaking of uh, fuckos. Oh, yeah, it is right. It, it's about time for Empty right. to reinstall Rocket League. <laughs> Totally is not going to play it anymore. No. <laughs> Dad, if I, we love you. He'll hydrate. Five dudes. <laughs>